By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this holiday season to actually get out ahead and be able to crush it in 2025 and be able to do things that 99% of people are not going to be able to do. 99% of people are struggling with something that's going to show up in this video. Let's see how many of you are beating these or planning for this type of stuff in the future so that you can be the top 1%. Nearly half of Americans have $500 or less in their savings accounts, so that's 50% of people. About 29% of respondents have between $501 and $5,000 in their savings accounts, while the remaining 21% of Americans have $5,001 or more. Few hold much cash in their checking accounts as well. Of those surveyed, 60% report having $500 or less in their checking account, while only about 12% have $2,001 or more. If you have $500 or more in a savings account, congratulations. Having money saved is tough because the dollar is just becoming worth less and less each year. Inflation has come through and wrecked havoc. Inflation has also been outpacing wages for a while and will continue for the foreseeable future. Wages are projected to outpace price increases by 2025. Getting out ahead of this before that actually happens is something that most people are not going to be able to do, so let's get you there. In this short video, I'm going to give you some random facts specifically from 2024 and some things that have been shocking me when I've been doing my research lately, and also some things to help you plan, especially for retirement, but even more so, if you're not even close to retirement, this is the time to start thinking about the next 10 years or even possibly down further so that you can get started on this now. By the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use this holiday season to actually get out ahead and be able to crush it in 2025 and be able to do things that 99% of people are not gonna be able to do. Since it is Thanksgiving here in America, I'd love if you'd take just one second and go down in the comments section and tell me something that you're thankful for. We could all use some positivity this season. I'm thankful to have the best girlfriend slash travel partner slash teammate in the world. I'm also just incredibly grateful to God that he blessed me with this platform on YouTube to be able to reach you and to be able to help out wherever I can. I'm also super thankful for the best little production assistant out there, Basher. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Okay, let's get back to some interesting stats and how you can win in 2025. Many know that they should save for retirement, but most don't know exactly how to be able to pull that money out or how to prepare for the time when they actually take the money. Or what if you only have a 10 year time frame rather than a 30 year because you decided to work for a lot longer and so now you wanna take out just a little bit more than what some are saying is the allowable amount. Or you have different types of accounts or different types of pensions and things and so how does all that play out? The 4% rule assumes you withdraw the same amount from your portfolio every year adjusted for inflation. This is ideal for those with a 30 year time frame. But this is just a cookie cutter approach. What if you wanna take out more per year? Or you wanna go on a trip? Or you wanna pay for your grandkids schooling? How can we plan for those specifics? Based on what you're invested in and how long you're projecting to want this account to last and then based on the future economic outlook, we can make an educational forecast to actually be able to withdraw even more upon retirement. This chart here shows an example of this, but it's best to do this type of planning with a professional, and I do these types of conversations every day with my clients. Here's a simplified version from Charles Schwab suggesting the allocations and withdrawal rate. If you have a 30-year time horizon and you have a moderate asset allocation, you could take between 4.2% to 4.8%. If you have 10 years and it's more in a conservative style asset allocation, you could take 10.6 to 10.9%. When planning for retirement, I always ask my clients, what specifically will be your living expenses at that time? Because it's gonna be different than what you're at now. For some of them, it's actually a little bit higher because medical expenses might be higher, especially if you're younger and retiring younger. But for most of them, the actual living expenses are gonna be much, much less in retirement than they are now, especially if you have a paid off house by then. I also want them to track what types of income or sources of income will they have at that time. Be sure to factor in social security, a pension, annuity income, or other non-portfolio income when determining your annual spending. This analysis estimates the amount you can withdraw from your investable portfolio based on your time horizon and desired confidence not total spending using all sources of income. For example, 
If you need $50,000 annually but receive $10,000 from Social Security, you don't need to withdraw the whole $50,000 from your portfolio, just the $40,000 difference. As far as what to invest in to get you to your goal eventually, I found this information very interesting, especially for those of you that have been watching me and following this channel for quite some time. Charles Schwab says, rather than just interest and dividends, a balanced portfolio should also generate capital gains. We suggest using all sources of portfolio income to support spending. Investing primarily for interest and dividends may inadvertently skew your portfolio away from your desired asset allocation and may not deliver the combination of stability and growth required to help your portfolio last. So basically what they're saying there is this old idea of putting everything into bonds and just sitting it there is actually gonna take away from your goals specifically. A portion of your portfolio can be in something like that, but the rest needs to look different. What they're describing is actually my new three fund portfolio. We have the interest slash dividends through something like SCHD, a good solid dividend ETF. We then have solid sustainable appreciation in a broad US market index like the S&P 500. And then we have a moderate amount of growth in this solid appreciation with something like a growth style ETF, something like SCHG or QQQM or VUG. Investing in this style portfolio will not only likely get you to your goal faster, but also grow your net worth like crazy and beat most all other investors, even professional traders. The late and great Charlie Munger, who is actually an investing professional himself, explained that 95% of these professional traders can't beat the S&P 500. The rise of index funds has created what Munger described as absolute agony among intelligent investment professionals who find themselves in a near impossible position of trying to beat the indexes. A feat that, as Munger put it, 95% of people have almost no chance of beating over time. One last thing to consider, and then I'll explain how you can win in 2025. Americans have accumulated unprecedented levels of debt. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, their Q2 2024 household debt and credit report indicated that total household debt rose by $109 billion to reach $17.8 trillion. Mortgage balances are up $77 billion, reaching $12.52 trillion. Auto loans increased by $10 billion, reaching the $1.63 trillion mark. And credit card balances are up by $27 billion, reaching $1.14 trillion. It's clear that Americans are seriously feeling the financial squeeze these days. Now, right now, we're about to enter some craziness in the holiday season. People are gonna go further into debt to buy unnecessary things and to get a moment of joy, but will suffer all next year paying it off through high interest credit cards or loans. They're also gonna make it so that they can't be putting any of that money towards investing. And if you're not investing or putting that money to work for you, then it's gonna be very tough for you ever to get ahead. My challenge to you is to break the cycle this holiday season. Don't unnecessarily go into debt. Get real with your situation and try to figure out an actual budget and see where you can make just a minor cut. Put a spending limit on gifts or cut in other areas. Make a sacrifice now so that you can live the life that you've always wanted sooner than you thought possible. In 2025, I believe we're gonna see a volatile stock market. And I believe there's gonna be some solid dips in there which are gonna be great for any of you that are gonna be able to invest consistently. This will be the time that you can really build your wealth. So I want you to do whatever you can to try to be able to dollar cost average, which just means putting a set amount into the market every single month no matter what whether that's $100 a month $500 whatever you can do but make it your goal to do that every single month in 2025 you're only going to be able to do that though if you get yourself out of debt as soon as possible and make sure you don't go further into the debt over this next month or so. Watch either of these two videos to keep you going strong in investing, but specifically watch this one to see my three fund portfolio and specifically how much to invest within each of the categories based on your age and based on your goals. Happy Thanksgiving.